we might think that certain populations should not work out at all. So some of these special populations would be considered uh, teenagers, pregnant individuals, maybe seniors, populations that are a little bit out of the quote unquote general population field. Now, these special populations, teenagers, pregnant women and seniors, and there's a lot of other ones, right? These are just a few uh, prime examples. They can all benefit from weight training and workouts. They can all benefit. There just needs to be some specific concerns when you're looking at these given individuals. Now, one of the things I always do when working with these special populations of individuals is to use RPE to gauge intensity. Now, RPE is essentially the rating of perceived exhaustion, right? How difficult an exercise or specific form of physical activity actually is for somebody, right? So when we use RPE or the rate of perceived exhaustion, we usually use this on a scale of roughly one to 10. So one being the easiest, 10 being the hardest. So I use RPE a lot in these specific populations because a lot of them might find it a little tougher to do exercise versus a normal general population. For example, if you have a pregnant woman who's doing exercise with you, normally if you were to working with an individual who is not pregnant, right? A normal, um, not pregnant woman, it might be easy for them to do a 10 minute walk, right? If you take that same person and do that same walk with them when they're pregnant, it might be twice as hard. So their RPE might have gone from a scale of five out of 10 difficulty to when they're pregnant an eight to nine out of 10 difficulty. So you're able to gauge intensity a little bit more, I think a little bit better in these uh, individuals uh, because it might be a little tougher than what you think. So some other things to consider when working with special populations, seniors, they might have joint replacements, so they might have to do slightly different versions of exercises. They may not be able to go uh, full range of motion and they might need to do something like machines, right? Or just different uh, ways of working out that you, if you are a little bit younger, might be able to get away with. If you're pregnant, another consideration is that their center of gravity is rapidly different. So if you think about it, when you have a baby, when you have a baby that is changing your center of gravity and pulling you forward a little bit. So some of those free weight exercises like squatting and deadlifting might be a lot more difficult with a baby inside of you simply because you're not able to balance quite as well. And you will get used to this. You will get better at it, of course. Uh, but ultimately, long term, this can be a little tricky when you are first navigating through your pregnancy. When it comes to a teenager, of course, they have a growing body. So they're going to be already fatigued from just literally living. They're going to be fatigued from their body just needing to grow, period. So when it comes to doing super hard workouts for them, you might need to auto-regulate and consider that if this person literally just slept for half their day because their body's hurting and growing, it might be a good idea to kind of lower the overall intensity of the workout, lower the intensity of what you were planning on doing that specific day to allow their body to literally just recover and rest in general, right? Uh, to, to simply allow them to grow as a human being. So it's just some things to consider with special populations. They should of course work out. It just needs to be a little different than what you might normally think of. Like the video if that gave you some good value and stuff to consider.